Governors from both parties are calling out the Trump administration for its decision to exempt Florida and only Florida from expanded offshore oil and gas drilling. Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke says Florida is unique because its coasts are heavily reliant on tourism. But what about the rest of America's coastline? Democratic Governor Roy Cooper of North Carolina wants his state exempted from drilling, too, and he joins us now. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, Allison. Why does Florida get special treatment? Well, it's interesting that six months ago, I said that we don't want offshore drilling off the North Carolina coast because of coast, coastal tourism and the economy. Thirty, over 30, North Carolina cities and towns passed resolutions saying they didn't want offshore drilling because of coastal tourism and their economy. And now the Secretary of the Interior has said that Florida is not going to have offshore drilling because of coastal tourism and the economy. We can speculate all we want as to the reason why Florida was was exempted. What do you think? But what they said yeah. is critically important because you've got a lot of states across this country, including North Carolina, that rely on it. We have a three billion dollar coastal tourism economy. We've yeah. got 22 barrier yeah. islands. We've got 300 miles of coastline. You have Cape so, Hatteras. Same treatment for North Carolina. Well, look, yeah. here's the map. OK, so here's the map as of, I mean, until this week when Florida was exempted. So this is the map that shows the coast. And you can imagine that all of these states um, have some object could have some objection one way or another. And in fact, there's oh, a whole a whole bunch of Republican governors from New Hampshire, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Maryland and South Carolina who object to this. So now you're asking for a meeting with Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke. Has he agreed? Not yet. Uh, we as soon as I heard about the Florida decision, I asked for a meeting or at least a telephone call with Secretary Zinke. I've talked with him about other issues before, and I had read his statement regarding Florida. They announced this plan that they're going to start offshore drilling off the United States coast. And then just a few days later, without public comment, without any regulatory or scientific investigation, they exempt Florida because of coastal tourism and the economy, and they want to listen to local voices. Uh, here's North Carolina. We're raising our hand. This is critical for us. Our state juts out into the Atlantic Ocean. And when you talk about offshore drilling, there's no 100 percent safe method to do that. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the deregulatory emphasis of this administration, boy, I, I don't trust them to put the safeguards in place. Uh, that offshore drilling would would need huh. the BP disaster in the Gulf Coast cost 60 billion dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that's over twice North Carolina's annual state budget. Yeah, this is an economic issue, and obviously we want to protect our environment. And I'm and I'm strong to 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 say I, I went to the coast as a child. I'm North Carolinian, born and bred, but this is ridiculous to come in and say we're going to start drilling off the coast and then picking off a state like Florida. Yeah, so we listen, want to go next. North I, Carolina is standing in line and I look forward to my meeting. I hear you. So do you think, I mean, Governor Scott, Rick Scott of Florida is a Republican. You're a Democrat. Do you think that Secretary Zinke will be as receptive to your complaints as he was to Rick Scott's? I certainly hope so, because the issues are the same. Coastal tourism, it, it, we are reliant on coastal tourism in North Carolina and our economy. And if they don't, then you're going to see some action from the state of North Carolina. Like we what? already are, are we're already mulling our legal options here, what particularly based on, well, well, we'll have to see what they are, because we, we have to look at what has happened and the disregard for the regulatory process in exempting Florida and what they said about it. Uh, clearly, they've said this is an economic issue. They announced they're going to do offshore drilling because of economic issues. But when the fact that we're becoming uh, more and more reliant on renewable energy, North Carolina is number two in solar in the country. There's an abundance of natural gas. Yeah. We don't need offshore drilling, and we don't need the risks mm. that go along with it. Yeah. And you're seeing a great frustration from Republican and Democratic governors 
across the country, particularly these coastal states. Yeah, oh, uh, for you've sure. Heard from members of Congress, you've heard from local communities. Our commercial fishing industry in North Carolina brings in hundreds of millions of dollars. And, and I, and we I don't want this were. risk. And so, Governor, I want to ask you while we have you about something else that's going on with your state, and that's gerrymandering, the question of gerrymandering. Oh, so boy, it is, is it ever. Look at this map, yeah. okay? Let me just put up for the viewers. This is the map as it stands of the congressional districts in your state of North Carolina. I mean, you can see, look, what, what the federal judge panel decided is that this is unconstitutional, the way it was drawn, because it so heavily favors Republicans. You see a sea of red there. I mean, how on earth did you win as a Democrat if you believe this map? Well, unfortunately for me, they can't redistrict the whole state of North Carolina. So I was elected all, by all of the people of North Carolina to be governor. But that's a good point. In fact, North Carolina is a truly purple state. We're 50-50. Why do we have a supermajority of Republicans in our state legislature? And why do we have 10 members of Congress who are Republican and three who are Democratic? It's because of technologically diabolical gerrymandering, the redistricting that this Republican legislature has put into place. They've already had state legislative districts struck down. They've already had these congressional districts struck down on race, the court, the federal court said that this Republican state legislature discriminated against African Americans with mm. surgical precision. So when they get caught doing that, then they augment their extreme gerrymandering by party, and now they have made it super Republican. Mm -hmm. And there's evidence in the public. One of the leaders in the state legislature, one of the Republican leaders, yep. when asked how in a 50-50 state can you have 10 Republican congressmen and three Democratic, and he said, because we couldn't figure out a way to make it 11. That there shows you, you right there it, that's, what, what we're talking about. That is and telling. the court has called them on it. Yep. We need the United States Supreme Court to come in and confirm that. Okay. Uh, we don't need... Uh, we don't need politicians picking their constituents. The constituents <laughs> need to pick the politicians. The and that's what we need to fix here. Understood. Governor Roy Cooper, thank you very much for giving us the status report.